Alrighty, old gatekeeper here. Here we got another uh, Silver Eagle 350. I uh, meant to do a video beforehand. I really wish I would have now that I'm thinking about it too, just to show you uh, what the uh, circuit looked like before and after. And also, um, uh, basically, Scott, I know you were you were sending this to basically see you know if you could get your radio matched up well with the amp, etc. And also, one of the main concerns is you had a little bit of SWR you noticed on your dozy on the output. And but I have probably done at least ten of these that have had issues with. Um, with a little bit of output reflect on these things man and see the problem is they just build these things you know over and over again and they just put a set capacitor on the output and um sometimes you know it needs a little bit more a little less like for example this one needed a little more i've done a couple of things to it uh just a couple upgrades i normally do to these type of amplifiers one of the things i do not like is they do not have any kind of grounding on the SO239s to the board. Um, because if you look at this, the back, man, this is a, a, a coated back. And if these things start getting loose or something, your SO239s are not going to have a ground. So what I always do off the rip is ground each of the SO239s. Usually I'll just put some solder on the screw, as you see here, and put it to the board. So I went ahead and grounded the SO239s for you. Um, next, I went ahead and did a power wire upgrade. Um, excuse me, a power distribution upgrade. One, one thing, and they do this because of um, room, pretty much. Let me see if I can turn the amplifier this way. All right. All right here's the way they had it before this is the only inductor they had on the power the power going to uh, the DC power going to the back of the transformers to power trans the transistor this is the only inductance inductance they had on the power so you need to have a little bit of inductance to keep a little bit of that RF ripple off your DC line or it's just going to travel on into your power supply, on into your car, on into your house, etc. So you want to keep a certain amount of inductance on the power wire to try to keep that down, the ripple down. And the way they had the distribution set up, the power wire came in soldered directly to a pad down here okay and they had this choke just a one one turn choke that soldered from where the power wire was going over to where the transformer is sitting on and if you look down there, there's just a tiny little bead of solder connecting this transformer to that pad and there's a very thin very very thin piece of uh, a trace that leads over to this one so Theoretically, this one right here is going to get a little bit less current than this one. I mean, it's traveling on a little thin uh, trace, and it's kind of hard to show that because everything's kind of jumbled up uh, together right here to show where that trace is. Yeah, you can see it. If you look behind this resistor back there, that's the trace that it's sitting on. And uh, I thickened up on the solder back there, but there's just a, like on this one right here there's just a bead of solder on the right and definitely the power distribution can be improved on these and this is basically the same modification i always do this is just a quarter uh uh 43 ferrite bead reason why you're using 43 more inductance and another one so what I went ahead and did is I unsoldered the power wire, the diode, and the 104 cap and um, mounted a piece of copper board right here 
brought your power wire over to the copper board, put a 104 and another diode right there, and went ahead and soldered your chokes to the power distribution board on there. And this wire, this is another thing I don't like the way they do these amps. This wire, which is sending power to your switches, literally just came over the whole circuit over here and soldered. Oh, I don't like power wires going over the amplifier like that, if, if you can help it. So I went ahead and moved that over here to the back of this transformer, because you just need a tad bit of, of, of amper, just a little bit of power for the LEDs, the, the relays, the preamp, etc. So I went ahead and just soldered that to the pad that this transformer is sitting on to give the power to everything to get that out of the way. Okay, so that's the power distribution mod that I've done for you. Uh, next thing is this pretty much is what you call an open loop system when it comes to feedback and there had no no feedback uh, cir uh, circuits at all period and uh, but the but the funny thing about it is the board was designed to have feedback circuits <laughs> if, you, if you look you know normally you'll see me when I had feedback circuits I'll put the uh, capacitor down here with the resistor going this way it doesn't matter which way you do it. It does the same exact thing. But the reason why I done it like this is if you see down here at this little pad that, that this capacitor and this resistor is soldered to down there, it's there. It's The board's designed to have feedback circuits, but they just didn't add them. And this is just going to keep your amplifier. Uh, it's just a safety mechanism to keep it more uh, stable. You know, it's going it's to uh, give neg negative feedback into your uh, the input of your amplifier and it's going to give a, uh, your amplifier a possibility of being more stable and it's just always a good thing to have feedback circuits just one of them safety mechanisms all right the next thing i did for you bud um is i'm not a fan of this at all i understand that they 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 do this right? they did this to find the exact capacitance to help boost this electromagnetic field which is you know part of the L circuit here uh, in a sense and I understand you know it helped them find the exact capacitance they need but see these trimmers are 350 volt trimmers I know they've got a uh, 500 volt cap in parallel with it but I'm, I'm not a big fan with leaving trimmers on top of transformers because these capacitors are one of the hottest capacitors they get they get the hottest in the whole amplifier so basically, I pulled the trimmers out, measured them. They may measure about a, a, a 753 uh, picofarad. So I went ahead and matched you two 753 picofarad caps. So you got two uh, uh, big DM19 caps that are that are going to last you forever with this with these transistors. So I got you set capacitors in there. And uh, the other thing, man, is uh, I was only getting about 260 to 270 watts PEP and about 80 bird uh, just with my bench radio. Usually with my bench radio with this amp, I usually get about 100 bird, about 300 peak or so usually with this, this particular amp. Uh, just doing these mods right here. And I, so I can't really tell you which one helped the power come up or maybe it's just all of them working together. But... I figured out the issue on the output, man, is the output just didn't have the proper amount of capacitance. Um, of course, I don't have SWR meters. I'm using bird meters, reflect, etc. Of course, when I hooked it on the dummy load, okay, and put my five watt slug in for reflect, I didn't see no movement at all, hardly. See, that's why I'm saying using dummy loads and measuring the actual uh, any kind of impedance impedance mismatch on the output of your amplifier circuit is not the best way to actually see an, a, a mismatch because that's a pure resistive 50 ohm perfect load okay but when i hooked it on my antenna which is perfectly tuned one to one that's pretty much the only reason i got it here I saw about four or five watts reflect. Bird reflect. So we're talking about 10 to 15 watts reflect on your output, bud. That was not good. 
So I went ahead and retuned the output for you and it needed about 45 or so pico farad more worth of capacitance. And if you look down here, this is your output capacitor. It's kind of hard to show you. And see, in the way they've got this set up, which is kind of unique, I've never seen another amplifier do this. Uh, this is your wire right here that goes to your output SO239, right? Well, they've got this capacitor down here to where it's in line with this wire when you're barefoot. And the reason why they're doing that is using that capacitor for two things. They're using it for keeping the impedance 50 ohms with the flow through, through the box when the amp's off, okay? And it just so happened to be that it that it's a good capacitance for your output um, tuning cap, okay, your load. So they using that. It's a 50, 51 peak of air capacitor. Well, you needed, like I said, about forty five or so more uh, peak of air worth of capacitance. So I just went ahead and added it right here at the combiner which is right here okay that's about the best the only way to really to add it in this circuit the way that, uh you know everything's compact so uh, you, as you see i've done a little bit of work to this thing for you man uh added a choke right here on the power wire just going to the switches um oh and another thing you didn't put this in your in your note but i noticed that the preamp was not working okay well, I removed the, the, the uh, transistor. The uh, transistor was still good, but I went ahead and put in a new transistor for you. Preamp still didn't work. I'm like, what the heck's going on here? So I take the transistor out and put another one in, thinking maybe there's just something wrong. You know, maybe that transistor was defected, etc. Still, the preamp was not working. It was just completely silent. So, um... Then I check the diodes, because sometimes your diodes in a preamp circuit can, can go bad, and it'll cause it, your preamp not to work. They were good. So after doing all that, man, I was pretty much flabbergasted. I'm like, the only other thing that can be the issue is the dang relay. And come to find out, man, like I said, I'm the first person to take this top off since it was built, because there were rivets in it. And I know you told me just to leave uh, the rivets off. I mean, don't, don't don't try to put screws in or nothing. Just send it back to you with the top on it. Um, so nobody else has been in here. It's just this relay right here for your for your preamp is just sticking. Because um, I'll notice when I sit here with the, with the preamp switch and turn it on, you don't hear nothing. I'll turn it off, and then I'll turn it on off a few times, and then it'll catch in the preamp when we're working. So it just so happens to be that that, and, and I, I have had to replace these particular type relays in quite a few amps. I remember one time I think I bought like 10 of these relays because they are a different um, lead pattern than these relays right here. So I think I bought like 10 or 20 of them one time a couple of years ago and actually ended up using every one of them in repairs. And when I ran out of, ran out of them, I just started... Uh, wire in, you know, the, the regular relay I normally use to uh, save time. So I don't know how important the preamp is to you, honestly, but at this point, to fix the preamp, you're going to have to remove this whole board, okay, and, and change the relay. So, you know, you're looking at more labor there, etc. I don't know how important that is to you, bud. Um, if you if you want, uh, you, you can let me know if you need me to uh, fix the uh, preamp circuit. I, I can do that. You just need to let me know for I ship it, I guess. But uh, you you didn't mention anything about the preamp in your in your letter, and it wasn't working. So I'm just going to give a educated guess that you didn't really care about the preamp to begin with, or don't use preamps or whatever. But uh, but like I said, you know, as long as you like for example a few times i turn it on off like that right there and it's working i just leave it alone so you know you may just want to do that if you ever do use it or whatever but anyway so we got it all uh done okay and it's working well
and I'll go ahead and show that to you now. I'm just going to use my radio at first. We do have your unit in over here, and uh, I just want to show you it working on my radio first, and we'll move over to that. All right. We are on 14.4 volts, 14.4, 14.5. All right, we're just going to leave this on high. There really ain't no reason to go to low, man. It's, this is a high drive amplifier anyway. Okay, we're just driving 4 watts RMS, okay, which is uh, about 15 to, to 20 PEP watts. Okay. So you got you a good low dead key there. Oh, right there, dead nuts on a hundred bird. Oh, yeah, we're looking at the bottom scale. All right, here's your peak. Oh, right there, about 320 or so watts PEP. And like I said before, it was only doing um, 260, 270, somewhere around there. And with doing these three major mods, it, you've, you've had a, about a 20 watt bird increase and a, uh, a um, 40 or so PEP or so, 40, 50 PEP increase. All right, so there you go. Now here is the, I almost forgot, here is the next issue you had is this amplifier was not set up to operate on sideband because they did not have enough capacitance on the relay. So what I went ahead and done, which was the easiest thing really for me to do, is they only had a 470 microfarad electrolytic on the relay, which wasn't quite enough to keep that relay um, latched while you're talking on sideband. And usually you add around a thousand microfarad, but these particular smaller relays, you don't have to add as much capacitance. So what I went ahead and did for you, man, is just added another 470 with it, which is going to equal around a 900 or so. Uh, uh, you know, if you want to get technically, uh, you know, nine, uh, what is it, 40? Uh, see, uh, seven, seven will be around nine. So it'll be close to, you know, enough to the thousand, and it works great on sideband now. So you're going to you're going to be able to uh, talk talk on sideband with it no problem bud um so that's about it man when it comes to all the mods i cleaned it up for you uh pretty good man um y'all know old gatekeeper does not hide nothing in his videos i'm gonna go ahead and light me up a celebration cigarette before i admit this one thing i always vowed to do whenever i started doing this you know years and years ago is to keep my videos 100% truthful, 100% pure. If I ever damn started a fire to let the dang cameras roll, you know, just to be on, <laughs> just to be 100% honest about anything, you know. If I look down and see a damn dead rat on the ground, I see a dead rat on the ground, you know. <laughs> and don't edit it out, just be myself, you know. And a lot of people appreciate that along the way and me just being me i am ventilated out here by the way i've had a couple people get on to me about smoking around people's i haven't really got anybody get on to me and my customer wise smoking around their equipment but other people talking and i had to remind them i'm in a garage out here working and i do not smoke unless the garage door is up because I don't want to sit here and just breathe in secondhand smoke, you know, while I'm sitting there smoking. I mean, I, it's bad enough that I got this crazy sick habit anyway that I picked up about age 17. And I'm now 34 years old, about to be 35. I bet that blows some of y'all's mind. I, everybody always guess, man, you sound like you're 50 years old. Well, <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, I don't want to hide nothing. There's been times I've made, I'm only human. You know what I'm saying? I'm not perfect. As a lot of y'all know, I use acetone, pure acetone to clean a lot of these amplifiers. Of course, printed circuit board amplifiers. Now, it's crazy, but yes, even with this top on, in, with the, this amplifier, there's, I don't see any holes for any air to get into this dang thing at all. But when I opened up, it was very dusty inside, man. More dustier than I could have imagined with it being sealed like that with rivets. But uh, it was pretty dang dusty in here. So I just went around, cleaned 
uh, the board, you know, in places with the acetone, etc. So anyway, I had your radio sitting over here, man. And I had the acetone sitting right here. And by accident, this was just a pure accident on my part. I knocked the acetone bottle over and a little bit of it landed on your damn microphone, man. And as anybody knows, when acetone lands on a mic, uh, plastic, it will eat the plastic up. So immediately when that happened, I freaked out and I was like, oh my God, I cannot believe I just did this. And I sat right here and went to wipe it off. And as you can see, part of the microphone wiped off right there. And I feel terrible about this. The, the mic still works just fine. There's no problem with the mic. It still works just fine. But as you can see, you know, it's kind of less than, if you look at it, it just looks like it's wet or whatever, as you see. Well, I know this uh, radio is brand new to you, man. And I'm very sorry about this. Uh, so to make this up to you, I've got a couple of, brand new microphones that I've got out of radios that I've never even used like a couple of superstar microphones I'm, I'm gonna send one of these superstars with you let me go ahead and take this out right now so this is a brand new mic right here that I got with uh I, I can't even remember which radio but I've never used it um is this a four pin yeah this is a four pin I think these Unidens are four pins, aren't they? No, they're not. God dang it. Oh. Um, yeah, these Unidens are not because they've got these microphones that you can use with the Unidens. I'm pretty sure they're only using four pins with this mic, but I don't think I've got any mics to fit this man. Um. I'm going to send this mic with you anyway, and uh, if you need for me to buy you another microphone, I will do that and give you this mic too, an extra mic for you. I'm sorry about that, man. I'm only human. I made a mistake. You know, I could just hide it and act like it didn't happen, but I'm not that type of person. I'm a person that, of course, everybody knows I'm a, I'm a spiritual person. I'm not a religious person. I believe man made religion, but I believe I'm a big believer in God and the whole nine, the big man that sits on the circle of the universe, but I'm not religious. I know that throws a couple of people off, but we ain't here to talk about uh, spirituality or religion, <laughs> but I believe in karma big time. You know, if I steal a piece of gum at the dang convenience store and nobody saw me, it doesn't matter. The will of karma is going to affect me in some sort of way sometime. <sighs> all right, since I got all that away, I'm, I, I apologize about that, bud. You know, no harm, no foul. Even if I got to buy you a brand new mic, man, you'll have a brand new Bearcat mic. So just let me know about that after you watch the video, bud. I'm so, so sorry about that. It's just a mistake, an accident. All right, so about the only other thing I can do at this point is hook this thing up on a little bit better of a power supply, which I'm going to wait and do that when I hook your radio up because that's the next thing we're going to talk about because uh, this power supply is big enough to run this, but this is more just for reference when I'm using this servo supply. Because it's supposed to be like a 60, 70 amp supply, but it really only gives me about 40 amps or so. And, you know, this could, this probably ain't pulling that much, but it could be getting close if I drive it a little harder. Uh, if I hook my hot radio up to the box, it does around 180, 200 bird, which is what you're going to expect out of two 455s like this. But um, as you know, I'm not a radio guy. I do simple things with radios. And as a lot of people know, the Bearcat 980s are really not the easiest things to modify. There, there are not really that many modifications to do to them out there. I had to ask a guy. I was able to turn your modulation up, okay, 
I was able to do that. I was able to turn your modulation up a little bit, but I was not able to adjust your dead carrier. I, I don't know how to do that. I couldn't find nothing about adjusting your dead carrier on the uh, internet. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm something I'm not. I'm not a radio guy. I'm an amplifier guy, but I do do simple things to radios, especially Cobra 29, stuff like that, dead key variables, you know, modifications. You know, I'm, I'm more of a Cobra 29 unit, unit in, uh, you know, older unit in radio type of guy. It's just simple stuff. I'm not a radio technician is what I'm trying to say. But when it comes, the majority of your radios you send me, I'm going to have no problem matching them up to your radio, but uh, your amplifier. But the problem is, is, this is like the newest radio you can, one of the newest radios you can buy out there. And everything's surface mount technology. And they're not the easiest things to work on. This probably wasn't the, the best radio you could buy. Uh, I hate to say this, bud, but it's probably not the absolute best radio you could have bought for an amplifier to be honest with you i'm sure you could send this off to a couple of technicians out there i know hard drive is a real good technician uh, mr hard drive out there i just recently uh, found him i'd never heard of him until uh, he done a uh, video on a uh, uh one of my rebuilds i did for a customer um uh, you got derail out there uh, of course, you don't always have anybody to say something bad about anybody. That's just the way it is. All I can talk about is my personal experience with people. And uh, D-Rail, I've never had an issue with D-Rail. I've got a, the baddest Cobra 29 I've ever owned from D-Rail. <laughs> so, you know, he's a great A in my book. I don't care who... You're not supposed to dislike people because of what other people say is what your personal experience is you know what i'm saying and um so you got a couple of radio techs out there you can you can uh possibly send the radio to if you want to but dude get a cobra 148 man you can't beat a cobra 148 you know if, you, if this was a cobra 148 man i could do you a dead key variable turn your modulation up do a good peak and tune the only thing I could do for you with this radio, I probably spent two, three hours trying to research how to modify this radio for you. And the only thing that I learned that to do was I was able to turn the modulation up probably around 100% for you. That's all I could figure out how to do with this radio. I really wish I could have helped you out with a dead carrier because it, it's, it doesn't have no swing at all with this amplifier. Actually, you're, you're back swinging just a tad bit on RMS with the amp. I mean, it's nothing to be worried about. But as you saw with my radio, I'm dead key in one watt swinging up to four watts RMS. So I've got a low dead key on RMS and I'm swinging up to 100 bird. That's what you want. All right. But um, now when you're on sideband, it's a total different thing. Now, of course, this radio is doing about, um, when I got it, I, see, I, I, usually I do before or after videos, but I just didn't for some reason. I think I came out here and just got started on it. Uh, it was doing like two, uh, 12, 13 watts peak on my bird. Uh, after I turned, just turned the modulation up for you, it was doing like 15, 16 watts peak. So it increased a little bit, but it's still not doing... Uh, as much peak watts as my bench radio is doing so it's only making this amplifier do about 200 watts peak let me go ahead and hook that up for you now and also show you that the uh the uh sideband delay is working too i didn't really mean for this video to be this long but uh All right, first I'm going to turn it on AM. Now, don't get me wrong, man. This is a really cool radio. I wish to, or maybe some people know how to modify the heck out of this thing. I just couldn't find anything. And I'm sure you can add an RFX 75 to it. And I know, I think I've seen some people do that, which is pretty cool. But it would be nice if you could just do a cool, clean tune to it to get about 20... 25 watts out of it peak uh maybe about four four or five bird that'd be great man that'd be great all right so we're on am with your radio 
And as you see, we got the 1,000 watt slug. Probably better put a smaller slug in, but see, we're dead keying about 100 watts. Oh, oh, a little bit of backswing. Not much, like I said, to be really worried about. But even if you go on low, oh, excuse me, on low, see, but you still got backswing. Oh, yeah. Oh, just a tad bit, not much. That's because of the radio. All right, and here's your peak. P E P. No, oh, about 220 watts. I mean, it'll last forever like this. No, oh, dear. All right, now let's show you that it works on sideband just fine. Okay. As you see, I keyed up and the amplifier did not do anything. Hey, what's going on, man? This thing's doing about 200 watts, though. I uh, give you a little bit of increase out there, a little bit of dB increase, no doubt about it. Old gatekeeper just cruising on this cat picking in out here around the northeast end of Georgia. Hippity cop, piggity skip. Oh, God, 1883, the gatekeeper loves this. <laughs> so here you can listen to the uh, delay action. Audio one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm gonna quit talking. It unkeyed. Now it keyed back up just fine.